Welcome to Extremely Valid Points. We are three business owners and friends who enjoy practical, real-life discussions about business, marketing, and creativity. Your hosts are Nathan and Jenny Sala, the owners of World Light Media, a digital marketing agency focused on helping organizations grow through online leads. And Dave Wilkins, the owner of Ellipsis Production Co., a video production company that specializes in creating meaningful content for businesses and nonprofits. We hope you enjoy today's episode. And along the way, we just might happen to make some extremely valid points. Welcome to Extremely Valid Points. We are continuing our conversation here today with Jordan King. Jordan is the marketing manager at Valley Children's Healthcare, and she also is the owner of Beyond PR and Communications. And if you haven't listened to our last episode, I encourage you to check it out. Um, We talk all things uh, healthcare marketing and um, PR marketing, and we're just continuing the conversation today. Welcome back, Jordan. Thank you. All right, well, let's jump back in. So Jordan, you had mentioned too a little bit about the how you see, um, you know, public relations and and marketing kind of merging or kind of crossing lines. Tell tell us a little more about how you've seen that play out in in the work that you've been doing. Um, well, I mean, I think that over the past you know decade or so that professionals have really been expected to become a jack of all trades, mm. where maybe at one point you were just the marketing person and now there's just the finance person and there's just a creative director, but now maybe they're looking to hire someone who you have to do all of it. And I don't know whether it's company resources that they're now bringing in or they just kind of, there's a lack of understanding of what marketing or in public relations does, but I think that the expectation has been that you can do all of those things and because of that, now public relations and advertising and marketing all kind of meld into one. Um, I, so I think that the industry itself has changed, but by default now the professionals have changed where, I mean, when I graduated college from my undergrad, I was looking for one job, right? I had a resume. All I was looking for was a job to hire me. Um, and now I don't know many young professionals that maybe don't have a side freelance thing they have going on or mm-hmm. a side nether stream of income. Um, I think part of that might just be living through a couple of recessions, a pandemic, things of that sort. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also recognizing that you can do a lot of things and in order for marketing public relations to be competitive, you have to keep learning all those things. Mm. And so I think that the professionals have changed, the way that professionals are learning has changed, um, the jobs that we are filling has changed. And so I think that it just has changed a lot over the 10 years, will keep changing a lot. So I think there's just, it's continually changing. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, that's interesting because I, I think with technology, right, it's kind of, it, the tools become more available to everybody. And I, I remember thinking that too, like in some of my early advertising jobs where um, I was, you know, so blessed to be in a, in working alongside people who like were very skilled at their craft um, but it was definitely set up more like, okay, you know, you're a photographer over here and you do this part of layout and you do this part of advertising very, you know, and you kind of don't want to get into anyone else's lane. And I, because <laughs> part of the, because of my naivete, naivete, you know, I was like, well, I want to try this and do this and do that. Um, and was a little bit frustrated, but then also able to learn from these people that were ha- very skilled in, in, in their areas. Um, so I think it's kind of great. It's a little ashamed sometimes you lose that sort of craftsmanship sometimes, but then you have the ability to kind of uh, traverse all these different areas. I think is really uh, is really great. So um, yeah, I think it's it's interesting for the people that are just jumping into it now because it's even more accelerated. I think in that avenue of you have to kind of know it all, you know. Yeah, I feel. I mean, I feel like the expectations are just amazingly high. Where it's yeah. almost I, really that's what you're expecting me to do. And I yeah. mean, it, I think it make, it's what's laughable when you look at maybe a job application or a hiring posting now, and they say, you know, you need X years of experience. You need to be skilled in all of these things. Mm-hmm. You know, that's so funny because I, when my degree is just in half of those things, or I'm right. an expert in a third of those things. But now it's all encompassing in one job. And you're right. I mean. I know some marketing positions that now double as a photographer position. Oh, yeah. So, okay, like I can take pictures on my phone, but I would never trust myself to be a company's brand image. But also somewhere in someone's mind, it makes sense where you're marketing. And so you should be in charge of the visuals and the photography. And I think part of it comes back to 
there's a world of people that still just don't know what public relations and marketing does. Um, I, sh- <laughs> I me- work- remember working girls got this kind of related, but it makes me chuckle still thinking about it. And we received a call, and it was probably my first few months working there. And I had done the website because, again, for some reason, public relations and marketing, you are in charge of the website and the oh, copywriting. You're also a website oh, yeah. And developer. You know, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank goodness for my space HTML days. <laughs> <laughs> But this woman called, was very obviously an elderly woman, um, and she was frantically irritated that we had, and I quote, just very traumatically inappropriate photos on our website. And I remember going on our website, like looking at the person's on the phone, customer service person's on the phone, and I'm going, what page is she on? What is she finding? Where is she at? And we go, well, ma'am, like, what did you search for to find these images? And she goes, I just put Girl Scouts in the white box on my computer, and these things came up. I just remember stopping and going, I can't control Google. Like, I can't control what <laughs> right. photos Google brings up. And having to explain to her that that's not necessarily what I do, having to explain to, like, a senior leadership that's not exactly what I can control yeah. um, <laughs> was a very hard conversation to have, <laughs> which, I mean, and I think it was just, again, reflection that people weren't aware of how technology worked and how marketing worked, and there's just an expectation that, oh, you're in charge of their reputation, you can fix everything. Yeah. Um, you don't run the entire internet? It's weird. I, I would love to put it in my resume. I'd love to have that in addition to what I do. Um, but no, I just, I mean, I think to me, I always laugh and I remember that because I go, yeah, they're, I mean, again, elderly, but still just the impression that we would be able to fix that. And that was an issue right. that we had. Um, but no, I do think that the world is just changing and you're expected to do a lot now. And so you're right. I think there's a specialty that's maybe being taken away from it. Um, and you can't dive deep into something that you really love in that area because you're kind of expecting that to be graphic design and audio management and web management and social media creation and everything under the sun. Yeah, and I wonder too if the reason why um, PR and marketing and advertising are melding together so much is because of the way we market and the way we communicate has evolved so much, you know, because before there wasn't social media and before there wasn't this need to have really solid brand messaging and tell your story and be personal, but also be professional. And, uh, you know, and now you have to be all these things, you know, your brand has evolved to um, its own, like, it's, it's its own personality and human being like living organism that has, you know, reputation to uphold. Um, And, you know, when I was a kid, I think advertising was, you know, TV commercials and magazine ads and newspaper ads. And um, there wasn't so much, you know, there wasn't hashtags. (laughs) There wasn't, there wasn't, you know, like going viral, you know, all of those things have really melded them all together, I think. Yeah, it really has. I mean, and I think that's kind of back to it somewhat leveled the playing field for anyone under the sun. I mean, a a big company might use the same hashtag as a small, someone just starting off. Um, I mean, thinking of, you know, bakers, a big bakery versus someone from their house trying to get started. They're going to use the same hashtag and they might be found the same ways. But yeah, I think the opportunities to communicate and market yourself have dramatically increased. Um, And so by default, how are you getting out there has dramatically increased. Uh, I think that that's definitely part of it. And there's just a lot of opportunities and ways to put your name out there. And everyone wants to do it all. And in order to do it all, you have to kind of know it all. So, <laughs> But I also think the standard is lowered, you know, of like the video or the photos, people's expectations about what those look like have lowered dramatically. I, I'd agree. No, I mean, I, I think a great example is you can – if you even just flip through TikTok or Instagram and the videos you see, they're probably not the best quality of videos and their audio might not be totally synced and <laughs> kills me and the t- captions probably spelled wrong, but no <laughs> one's going to care that they use the wrong there or something in that because it's getting a lot of engagement and a lot uh-huh. of hits. Um, so, yeah, I think you're right that the standard of what might be considered professional has maybe been brought down or is not as important to people. Not I don't important. know which one it is. Yeah. yeah. Maybe both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was just reading something about, you know, if you post a, a TikTok or in- Instagram post and then you go back and you realize, oh, I did spell something wrong or this is incorrect. They say, don't just leave it mm-hmm. because, you know, you're going to you're going to mess up all the engagement and algorithm that's going for you already. Just mm. let it get, let it be. So I think it's interesting because, yeah, the, the emphasis is content, content. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, it's. How you know as a as a corporation, how do you find that balance? Because you want to 
you know, have a, an image that you're, you're proud about, uh, you know, to, to show out to the world, but then also you don't want to be so precious with it that you just never get in front of people. I think the biggest thing I always hear from a company is I want to be engaging and fun and use jokes, but I also want to be seen as professional. <laughs> <laughs> I right. always laugh because I go, okay, so you just want this like magic unicorn content that's yeah. always created. <laughs> And they don't want to be offensive because they don't want negative feedback, but they really want to be – use jokes and yeah. things in their caption that make people laugh and chat. But at the same time, they want to keep their brand. Mm -hmm. and, okay, so we need to really go back to basics and identify who are you wanting to be as a company? What are you wanting people to associate you as? Are you wanting to be fun and – friendly and aimed at 20 something year olds because your humor is going to be very different than if you're aiming at 65 year olds you know it's probably gonna shift a bit um, but I think that companies kind of just need to take a step back and remember who you're wanting to be and that doesn't mean you have to be posting memes every three posts it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that your captions have to be jokes and punny and everything else you might just be yeah professional and it may just be putting information out there um, but I think that people see their competition, whoever that might be, and they, again, want to be it all and do it all. So that means that they have to fit everything into one post. Right. Um, and I I think part of, I honestly think a majority of my job is just having people take a step back. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's really think yeah. through what you just asked. Um, I mean, but he think this morning I had a meeting with a client. He goes, you know what you see um, on an Instagram feed where you see all these photos and it's like nine photos into one image? I'd love to do that. I said, okay, let's, again, take a step back. Why? Because mm -hmm. none of those individual posts are going to get great engagement. It's great if you have, um, like, if you're a creative industry or you're a photographer or you are a creative company um, for this particular client. That was not what they were. And I said that probably doesn't serve a huge purpose to what you are doing. Um, that's actually probably going to, speaking of analytics, right, negatively impact you. And so I feel like more often in my day, I feel like I don't have kids, but I feel like I'm telling you, hold on, stop, no, right. way more often than I should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know that's good. And I, one question I've asked people when they come to us for social media is what, what do you want to get out of it? Exactly. I mean, because we can get you likes and followers, uh, but that doesn't necessarily equate to getting business. And so, you know, a lot of people just think I need to be on social media because that's where everybody is. And um, and they don't but they don't really know what they want to get out of it or, or what you, know, you have to have an end goal in mind. And that can drive your content and the direction that you take it in. Exactly. I mean, I think people sometimes forget nowadays that more often than not, your social media may serve as your customer service platform now. Mm -hmm. oh, so if yeah. you're there and people have complaints or questions that that's maybe how they're reaching out because it's just more convenient because they're already there. Sure. And so it could work out well, like you said, where the photos on that page may not be getting great likes or comments, but you're getting messages and asking about the cost of something or asking mm -hmm. about how they can get in touch with you. Um, so that's probably increasing your bottom line more than 100 likes or something of that sort would be. But at the same time, if they have an issue, they're also <laughs> possibly going to reach out. Yeah. And this could either harm your reputation or it means who's ever managing your social media now has to have way more information in your company than you may have thought. Right. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like I tell clients all the time who just expect me to post and kind of leave it be, say, okay, so I might reach out to you around the clock because if these people have questions, I don't want to leave them hanging um, and I may not have this information. So we're going to have to have a really open dialogue and open way to communicate. If someone asks me for this price point, I don't want to wait four days to respond to them. Um, if someone says they had an issue with a product that they purchased from you, I don't want to have to just kind of wait for you to respond. I want to be able to message you and say, hey, this person reached out. It seems kind of vital. You respond you know, in a timely manner. Um, but no, I think you're right. I think people forget that there should be a purpose behind why they have a social media and what that purpose is. Yeah, how have you seen that that um, you know quick engagement pay off for your clients? Has that been something that's been really like wow, this really building a loyalty with their audience? I think um, for the customer base that that's the goal. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, I mean obviously depending on your goal and your social media's goal, if it's just to put yourself out there and get visibility, then great. But you're probably going to get a lot of trolls. Right? You're going to get a lot of people that <laughs> yeah. are just coming in because you now have high visibility and they aren't actually interested in what you're doing. Um, but for the smaller companies, that that is their goal is to build 
um, you know, a relationship with their customers. I think the small wineries in particular, yeah, they have questions. They get to say, oh, my gosh, I love this wine. I was out there for my birthday or my wedding, and it mm-hmm. was so exciting. Um, but that's, I think, really great that they I get to respond, um, that they have that platform to share those stories. I mean, if they do have an issue of something going wrong, then I'm able to, yeah, quickly respond. Because from, I mean, we're all customers of someone. And I think if you have a question and you reach out, you want someone to respond quickly. You want yeah. to not be left there hanging or a month later and someone go, oh, I saw, I finally saw this message. Like, that's not what you want. So you want to make sure that they have the same interaction that you would want if you were the customer. Yeah. And I, it's interesting for me sometimes, to, and I don't necessarily parse through all the comments or anything, but like if you see that somebody has posted a a criticism or something of a company and you see them respond back and how they respond back, mm. that can like put me into like, wow, I really was, you know, thought they did a, a tremendous job of hearing this customer and responding and not just being like defensive mm-hmm. or yeah, it could maybe put me to the other side of like, mm, they didn't seem to really take care of that person, you know? Yeah. That's true. I've, I've definitely made decisions about companies by observing how they respond to complaints. You know, either I I think they're, you know, reliable and trustworthy or they're shady or they're emotional and they shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, if they're not responding at all, then they don't care. There's a lot of judgments you yeah. make based on those responses. I mean, I think responses potentially hold as much weight as the actual reviews on something. So, I mean, as I think naturally people might look through reviews on any kind of platform. And, yeah, the responses hold just as much weight. I agree. I agree. I've seen, you know, negative posts or negative reviews. And then you see the manager come in and acknowledge that problem and want to make it right. And then that makes you feel even better that, like, if I do have a bad experience with these people, they're going to make it right. Well, I think it also gives the company an opportunity to kind of maybe show the posters true colors because I think mm. most people who own companies know that there might just be someone who comes in having a bad day or mm-hmm. a bad, at one time bad experience. And if you respond back in you know, a professional exactly how you just described manner and the person comes back still upset and mm-hmm. their follow up is still angry, then as the reader, I'm going to go, they're kind of just ridiculous like they, right. I'm discrediting their review that's not important to me anymore um, which is what you'd want as a company if you have a negative review um, and I think for from a PR standpoint that is sometimes depending on who's running it it's lost the importance of that transparency mm. where a lot of people um, just don't want negative reviews and they'll try and hide it or oh, delete yeah. it yeah. and I think that that transparency is an opportunity for companies to try and show how they'd handle things in their true colors because I mean for the most part the, your customers probably aren't stupid. They're, you're going to know <laughs> someone's going to have a negative yeah. experience, but it may not be your fault. Right. Yeah. They, I, you know, people don't really expect that you're going to be perfect in every way, but how are you going to handle it if something goes wrong? Exactly. Yeah. So when you're meeting with a client, like say like a new client uh, wants to hire you, how do you um, kind of determine what what you need to do for them as, and to stay on brand and make sure that their marketing and PR is authentic um, like what are your questions or what's your process like when you're meeting with them? So I, I think I'm in an interesting um, s- scenario where because it is not my full-time nine-to-five, um, I get to kind of pick and choose who I want to work with. Mm. And so similar to, I mean, Girl Scouts Valley Children's, there's a really big heart behind those companies, right? Yeah. There's a big reason and impact for them. So any kind of side companies I take, I want to make sure that – There's something they're wanting to achieve. There's a big dream they maybe have that I can help them um, kind of reach and social media or marketing or correct public relations will get them there. And so I think for me, first and foremost, making sure it's a company or product that I would enjoy Mm -hmm. um, or that I would enjoy. They're people I enjoy working with and it's a message I enjoy delivering. Um, Beyond that, I think it's kind of just asking them, where do you want to be? And I think Yes, most business owners, when they started their business, kind of think about that. Where do I want to be? What do I want to achieve? And I think when you get to the day-to-day and time goes on, you sometimes forget that. And you forget really, A, maybe how far you've come from when you started. So, you know, you've actually grown so much. Do you remember how much you've grown? But where do you want to see yourself in a few years? And having that conversation, I think, kind of helps put into perspective that marketing can help you reach that. That it's not just social media and it's not just responding to emails or just putting out newsletters. But if you approach it in a strategic way, these actually are tactics that can help you achieve your business's goals. Um, And I think that a lot of times when I meet the client and ask them, what are your goals? They get really caught off guard 
because these are smaller companies. So, I mean, obviously, I think individuals that work, I don't say across the board with different departments, they might be more aware of how that fits in. But, um, you know, just smaller people where I want to know from your small social media person what your goals are, they get caught off guard and then they are able to start realizing how we can work together. Um, and so typically I tell them I want to work with them for at least a year because there's ups and downs throughout the year, right? Yeah. And there's seasons and I want to kind of be able to dictate what goes well when. Um, and then from there, just kind of after, evaluate after a year and see, okay, so what do you think? How this work? Is this what you were expecting? Um, and maybe the goals that they actually had set weren't achieved in the way they thought, but something else happened. And then we get to kind of readdress and redirect so I think for me and my clients, it's definitely more personal relationship because it is just me or just me and a designer, just me and maybe someone coming in on a day-to-day basis to help. Um, but they get to really work one-on-one on their business more than I think they anticipate. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. That's a great approach. So what would you say is, you know, when you're talking to your clients or just you personally, what's your favorite social media platform for companies and businesses um and and where do you recommend where do you find you recommend the most for people to to use so personally i'm a creature of habit and i hate change which is really unfortunate for the people because <laughs> it is only change mm-hmm. um i mean i think probably by default my age i i'm on instagram very often um and so for me that's where i'm at a lot but i also recognize that i may not be that company's target market so right, as a 30-year-old female, I may not be the person that a steel company is trying to reach or a political organization is reaching out to other companies is trying to re- reach. Um, so it kind of comes down to, again, who's your audience? If your audience is primarily older anyone, you know, maybe Instagram, Facebook, but if you're trying to reach teenagers or, you know, young 20-something-year-olds, you might not need Twitter or Facebook. Like, they just might not be beneficial platforms for you, and it may be more time wasted trying to figure out what to do there than it is actually benefiting you. Um, And I think it just kind of, again, you're getting back to being creative of how can you get out there. And that's where I really love anyone kind of coming in from a younger generation because there's, I get to kind of see what's coming up next. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I get to see what the, I have a younger siblings and the youngest one, seven years younger than me. And I remember when she started talking about a couple platforms that had come out, I said, I have no idea what that is. And I've never felt so out of touch with my field in my life, <laughs> but like walk me through this because if it is somewhere that a client can be, like I want to be able to, and I mean, it didn't, I can't even remember now because it didn't grow big, huge, kind of yeah. like some of the bigger ones, but you still want to know. Mm-hmm. You're um, not on bleep blorp? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not there yet. Um, so I think it depends uh, what I recommend based off of the company, but because uh, I have a handful of wineries. Typically, Instagram tends to be the place um, just based off of the content and where the mm. customers are. Um, Very th- visual. Yes. Um, I think for a while, like, they thought Pinterest might be great. But, again, it was kind of coming down to what are you trying to achieve? Mm. Like, yes, your audience is there, but you're trying to – I don't know. What do you want? <laughs> yeah. So how do you stay passionate for what you do? I mean, it, I, I know it takes a lot of energy, a lot of – thought, you know, how do you, how do you stay passionate about that? I drink so much coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think it's a variety of things, but I think the first part is being able to juggle Valley Children's as well as my own company mm-hmm. keeps things different, right? It keeps things exciting. So I'm not stuck, not that I'd be stuck with just healthcare or just other clients, but it kind of keeps that diversity in my day to day. I also, I mean, on a personal level, really like having kind of a light at the end of the tunnel. So really like keeping things something to look forward to, whether it's a trip or whether it's um, just an outing or something, a gathering with friends. Um, I think those things keep my days and my life different enough that I get excited about everything I'm doing. So whether it's creating social media content or working um, on a project for Valley Children's and then coming back to, okay, I also get to plan this trip for my friends. Um, I'm doing very similar things that I do in PR, but on a personal level, so I get to stay excited about it. That's great. That's great. Well, this has been such a fun conversation about marketing and social media. Um, It's been a pleasure having you here, Jordan. Thanks for joining us. Thank thank you, you. guys. Uh, Tell our audience how they can reach out to you. Um, They can find me anywhere that they might find their friends. Um, Jordan Adams King, Instagram, Facebook, email. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Thanks for spending time with us at Extremely Valid Points Podcast. To learn more about this episode, see our show notes at extremelyvalidpoints.com. 
Be sure and subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Spotify, or Google Podcasts, or wherever you like to listen. Follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube and Instagram at EVP underscore podcast. If you need help with your video for your business or nonprofit, connect with Dave at ellipsispro.co. And if you need help with digital marketing, Nathan and Jenny can be found at worldlightmedia.com. Or feel free to send us an email at questions at extremelyvalidpoints.com. Thanks again for joining us. See you next time.